All right, our topic for this week is going to be doing integrals over surfaces. So the first type of integral we do in this respect has to do with calculating surface area. We can use double integrals to tell us the total area of a surface that is inside three dimensions. And to start that off, we need to have a parameterized surface. We have to have some kind of map that sketches out all the points of that surface as using two coordinates. And then in order to calculate the surface area, it's important to calculate an area distortion factor that tells us exactly how big the surface is in some areas and how, and how small it is in other areas. And it's very, very similar to how we needed a distortion factor for change of variables with double integrals. And in exact form, if we've got a surface area with a parameterization phi of uv, a function of two variables, then the surface area is given by this formula. The formula looks a little bit strange, so we'll go over it in a little bit more detail in a minute. What we do is we take our formula phi, and it has two partial derivatives. One of them is a partial derivative with respect to u, and one of them is a partial derivative with respect to v. And those are what are called the tangent vectors to the surface. And what we do is we take those, we take the cross product of those two variables, of those two tangent vectors, then we take the length and then we integrate that up. So let's talk about these tangent vectors. These tangent vectors are the partial derivatives of phi with respect to the u variable and the v variable. And sometimes for shorthand, I'll write those as tu and tv, meaning the tangent vector in the u direction and the tangent vector in the v direction. And what that's supposed to mean is the following. If I look inside u and v coordinates, what my function phi does is it takes in a u coordinate and a v coordinate and spits out x, y, z coordinates. And what these tangent vectors do is they tell me, look, if I move in the direction of the positive u axis, I'm going to start to move along my surface in three dimensions. And so the tangent vectors tell me exactly how fast I'm moving in 3D along that surface and in what direction. Or if I move in the V direction, the tangent vector TV tells me how, how fast I'm moving in the V direction. That's what they do. They're always parallel to the surface and they go in kind of the two opposing directions corresponding to the coordinate grid. If you like, if I instead draw a little coordinate grid on my u and v coordinates, and I look at what kind of grid I get on the surface inside 3D, the vectors tu and tv point parallel to those two directions. Let's talk about why this formula for surface area works. The reason is, just like before, if I have my u and v coordinates out here and I spit out my x, y, z coordinates over here, I get some kind of curved shape or potentially curved shape sitting inside 3D. And if I focus my attention in on one little tiny rectangle here, it turns into a very, very small very, very slightly curved rectangle inside three dimensions. The smaller it is, the less curvature there is. And so I like to figure out, you know, how this shape is pretty, pretty close to being a parallelogram. And let's figure out exactly which parallelogram it is. To figure out what a parallelogram, what parallelogram it's close to, I have to figure out, you know, what's a good line that's pretty close to this edge on the bottom? And what's a good line that's pretty close to the edge on the side? If you calculate those out using the formula for the linear approximation, this edge is pretty close to the tangent vector in the u direction times the width of the square. And this side is pretty close to the tangent vector in the v direction times the height of the square. And so if I want to know the area of the parallelogram that's pretty close to this, I'm supposed to take the cross product of those. The area of that parallelogram is the length of the cross product t, tu delta u cross with tv delta v. 
but changing those two vectors by lengths, by rescaling them by delta u and delta v, just kind of pulls out of the cross product. And so the area is approximated basically by the cross product of those two tangent vectors times the length and the height. And so then when I take a limit and let delta u and delta v get smaller and smaller, this gets closer and closer to actually calculating the surface area and those turn into du and dv inside the double integral. So that's kind of why this formula works and where it comes from. It's coming from saying that a very slightly curved surface is pretty close to a parallelogram and using the formula for the area of a parallelogram. 